this idea of universes collide and opposites hasn't worked for me. What's worked for me is finding someone who sees the world in a similar way to the way I see the world. Someone who has similar values. Like someone who loves to do the things I love to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of energy is spent in negotiating. Oh, you like this, so I'll go do this. And I like this, so you do that. For me, it's why do that? Why not just take the time and find someone who loves the things you love to do? Ellen and I, each evening, I live in this old farmhouse. And when I'm at home, not on the road, we love sitting down with our dog, sitting on my lap, catching up on the day. Last night, we watched the John Galliano documentary on Apple, which is amazing. And we will chat and we will laugh. Sometimes we'll read. Sometimes I will work on my Italian. But we just love many of the same things. We don't need to be in a restaurant every night. We love being at home. We love simple food. We love walks. She's a yoga teacher. Uh, she gets me. That's another factor. Rather than... You know, in, in the book before this one, The Everyday Hero Manifesto, one of the chapters was a red flag is a red flag. That's another humble offering. A red, I did this post on Instagram, a red flag is a red flag. And I saw a few people, just a couple of people, they wrote, no, don't look at someone's red flag. Look within and see what what you're attracting. Or, And my my thought was, no, like, a red flag is a red flag. If someone lies at the beginning, they're going to lie later. If they, if someone is doesn't keep their promises, that's a red flag. If someone, et cetera, et cetera. I think we run into a lot of problems where we see red flags, but we don't want to see the red flags and we pray that they're green and you could lose 20 years of your life because of that mistake. When you met Elle, I'm curious how you met her, if you're willing to share that, but what were some of the things, some of the green flags that you noticed you thought, hmm, this is something that actually at this stage of my life would really work well for me. Happy to share it. Green flags. Incredibly honest, mm -hmm. incredibly sincere, deeply hardworking, huge love of family, loves yoga, loves personal development, old soul, super positive, never speaks ill of other people. Mm. Um, takes good care of her health. I could just go on and on. S sincere. When there's a conflict, we don't have a lot of conflict, but willing to sit down and work through it in a mature way. Those are some of the green flags. Just did a few. All, did you all meet? Well, it's just it's just the two of two of us, not all of us. No, I'm just joking. Um, it's uh, we were introduced through friends. Nice. The old school dating app <laughs> introduced old, through old, old school. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Awesome, man. Well, you know, as someone who's done a lot of of inner work as well, and being older, you know, my my partners in her mid thirties, I'm in my early fifties and I can relate to a lot of the qualities that, that are important to you. At the same time, I also recognize that, you know, I I'm further ahead and in, in the road of, of being self-aware and, you know, all those, all the things, um, that lead to sustainable partnership. And that's been something that I've been you know, in my past relationships, sort of negotiating on and trying to, you know, learn how to become a lot firmer around and just thinking, you know, 
she's doing the best she can given her current understanding of how things are and maybe she'll improve. But there's like a thin line between that and falling in love with someone's potential and um while while sacrificing, you know, what it is your your values. I think some people probably struggle with that. I know I've struggled with that in the past and it's refreshing to hear your experiences. And I know it's not perfect or anything like that, but you know, I think um and one of the things you talk about in your book is being very clear about your values and, and using that as sort of a guidepost for who who you led into your life in that romantic way. Yeah, I I hear you. I agree with you very much. I would say use joy as a GPS. Trust your mm -hmm. gut. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you if you just love as simple as it sounds, you don't want a project. You want a partner. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, as you know, subconsciously we are attracted to people that you know. There's there's drama addictions, right? And and it's quite remarkable that. And I'm just saying generally, there are some relationships that I've observed where they could be very peaceful, but one or both of, probably both of the partners have a hidden, invisible addiction to drama. So every time there's peace, they create drama. And that often goes back to childhood where there was a lot of trauma in the home. So as counterintuitive as it sounds, drama is normal. So when there's peace, it's unfamiliar, which frightens the partner. So unconsciously they create drama to recreate the familiarity of their childhood. And so I think having a partner versus creating a project is, is important for our creativity, productivity, longevity, peace of mind. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day, so make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really gonna love this one as well. And if you ever wanna see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.